Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode. <clears throat> For today's episode, I wanted to speak about something that's... I don't know how to say it. It's, it's like... <clears throat> if I was to exit this dimension, if I was to transition out of this realm, this would be one of the most important things I would like to have uh, commented on before I have exited the realm. I have thought about the notion that we are 8 billion creatures on a rock in the middle of nowhere. I have thought about we're 8 billion creatures on a rock in the middle of nowhere that are simulating what the rock means to them. And these 8 billion creatures, based on their language and their behavior and their location, <clears throat> separate themselves from one another. That means like tribes back in the day that would put paint on their face. We're still doing the same thing, but that paint <coughs> is our language, again, our behavior, and our location. We have a saying, we say one man's uh, treasure is another man's trash and another man's treasure is I don't know, someone else's. Uh. <laughs> one person's trash is another person's treasure, one person's treasure is another person's trash, like something like that. So I feel when it comes to the analysis of is this world cruel? Is it not cruel? Is there anything wrong with it being cruel? Or <clears throat> does it need to be changed? And so as long as 8 billion human beings are each, tra uh, each trapped in their <coughs> bubble of uh, the world story, it is so easy to be cruel, you know, that means it's like um, a person can punch thin air, <clears throat> you know, and feel like they're not being cruel. But what if like an interdimensional being is like, hey, I'm standing here. <laughs> <clears throat> so you see, cruelty is subjective based on how much we care for, for how things change from their beginning state. You can say... <clears throat> Uh, back in the day, the cruelty that parents showed, this was something that shocked me. I, I was curious about how the generation of my parents were raised. <clears throat> and I came to this recognition that back in the day, the reason parents would hit their children was because they had this sort of saying where they would say, hit the child so you don't hit yourself later when the society hits your child. So the parent that hit his child, <clears throat> and I don't mean be violent with your kids, I'm saying like back in the day, <clears throat> that intensity was necessary to, in some sense, fit in the world view. You know, we have people like Jordan, speak, Jordan Peterson speaking about the phenomenon uh, of the man-child, and <clears throat> we have that scene in Game of Thrones where, what is it, that, um, I don't know who it is, that person looks at uh, Jon Snow and says, kill the boy. And he means kill that inner narrative of the incapability, the lack, or whatever that is within. So, a strategy to bypass cruelty, we in some sense define a weak. One strategy is cruelty is no longer cruelty. Everybody man up, you know. <clears throat> Everybody, <clears throat> you know, find uh, armor and just endure. 
or we bypass cruelty by starting a new application while we have an application going. I mean, technically, I'm going to be bypassing one. If one considers a cruel world, they are accepting a cruel world first <clears throat> and then trying to change it, which means karmically it won't happen. A person must accept the better and then walk to it. Cruelty can be said to be two types even. I can totally say this. There is a cruelty in the outer realms, which is literally <clears throat> a raise your sword and shield. The war has begun. That's like the cruelty of the outer realms. The laws of nature don't care. You think gravity cares for our emotions? <clears throat> you know, it's if gravity cared for our emotions, can you imagine if the person's like, I don't like the gravity, and gravity's like, oh my god, sorry, let me reduce the gravity of your planet. <laughs> It seems the laws of nature don't care about the personality, only the personality that has arose from the laws of nature can care for the laws of nature. And so in a realm where <clears throat> in front of our eyes <clears throat> the body's life is our destiny, in front of or behind our eyes, it's our mind's life. And when we say cruelty, the cruelty of the mind is taking away from the future and the cruelty <coughs> of the body is not letting the past change. I'll give you an example. Right now I'm smoking. Uh, I'm a cigarette smoker. <coughs> and this is cruelty. I know. I know I'm being cruel to my outer realms. I'm conscious of it. Not totally from all dimensions, but I know that it's a sort of I'm being cruel to, uh, in some angle to my own <clears throat> out of my body's life. But then I think about like how does how is life satisfactory in the sense that like you have in some sense a healthy body. I mean, what are the possibilities? Healthy body, unhealthy mind. Healthy body, healthy mind. Unhealthy body. <coughs> uh, healthy mind. And ultimately unhealthy body and unhealthy mind these are the synchronizations between the inner realm and outer realm i think the system works let me just <clears throat> a little deeper here guys. i think i've created a perfect system <laughs> one of those moments where <clears throat> what am i looking at is it the future is it so let's see three dimensions to the human being uh, a chaotic dimension, an ordered dimension, and a median 
M-E-D-I-A-N, <coughs> dimension. A dimension between chaos and order, or that which is aware that chaos and order are codependent. The median dimension is the mind. A person should treat their mind like a river, and when they engage the moment, when they make decisions, when they move, you animate. This is why you, anybody who, it doesn't matter <coughs> what outcome you want from the world, if you just start moving your biological existence, your mind is going to tap into some rhythm. When it comes to the body, the body is constant chaos, constant strain and pressures from the outer realms. There was the scene in um, uh, the stand-up comedy bit from Louis C.K. <clears throat> and he was talking about like airport security and them choosing the wrong guys and choosing this old man who was so old. It was as if the, the atmosphere was making him and crushing him into a diamond. Like, I don't know how Louis C.K pulled that image <laughs> so when it comes to the body's life you are in some sense retaliating against the forces of nature that means it's like before there's even people as uh, enemies or challenges or resistance or opponents it's the person's own <clears throat> continuity in the realm you know it's, it's like after some point whose business is living Whose responsibility is is it to move your life? You know, it's like when that when that settles in, the person realizes, ah, oh, whatever I do in this world, I have the one role. <clears throat> you know, and that's for the body's life. So for the body's life, it's as if um, we gotta use the body, and for the mind's life, we gotta use the mind. And when it comes to, <clears throat> I would say the true nature of the unknown that's our ultimately our the fullness of our mind's life so a spiritual life <clears throat> doesn't exist because the spirit is actually not a concept not conceivable because the spirit is not conceivable every notion on spirituality we can say it is the unknown mind's life that means <clears throat> this thing of imagination and reality we have grown past it as a species It's as if there's unknown ways the mind moves, <clears throat> there's unknown uh, ways the body moves, there's known ways the body moves, there's known ways the mind moves. So this is the thing, for example, a yeah, person can even, let's say you become a saint to the outer realms. <clears throat> but what if you can be cruel to your inner realms? I'll give you a story, there was the story I remember <clears throat> reading online. So back in the day, evidently there was this uh, church that was beside this, uh, what's the term? Uh, uh, I forget the term. Uh, it's not a, uh, is it a hostel? Pretty much there's a prostitution building for pros prostitution beside this church <clears throat> and there's this priest that every day he wakes up and he acts very, very, very pure, religious, does everything in accordance to the holy book. Right, but at the end of the day he would notice that where his room was, was right beside this house for prostitution and there was a prostitute who would actually live a very impure life throughout the day but at the end of the day she would just come home and in front of the mirror she would just pray to God or something her attention was always on to God even though she was in the filthiest outer house let's say <clears throat> due to the morality of uh, back in the day's interpretation <clears throat> So, in, the, in her outer realms, she was suffering, but at the end of the day, she would come and she would just focus on the truth of nature, you know, as if there's something more than just the dance of our body and mind here. Now, what happens is this priest, every day, this priest comes and just stares, stares at this um, woman who in some sense is praying to uh, God, you know, <clears throat> her attention's on God. 
Now, what happens in this story, and of course, this is just a story. So what happens is that uh, they go to heaven. That means the time comes and they both die and they go to heaven. And the priest finds himself in front of heaven's and you know, gates, you know, the pearly gates. And right before <clears throat> the priest is about to enter heaven, there's a pause, as if there's this force field. There's this, this kind of, <clears throat> let's say, uh, hand of the ultimate, you know. And that he, he, in some sense, can't go into the gate. And this is where... That woman from the building next door goes into heaven first. And this priest is not allowed. And this priest gets angry and he shouts at the voice at the pearly gates. And he's like, my whole life, I did exactly as the book said. Do you know, I lived a pure life. Why is it I did everything that a, a good boy, a good divine boy should do? Do you know, why didn't I go to heaven? <clears throat> you know, and then the voice says that you in your outer realms, did you, sure, you, you acted as a pure life. You lived a pure life, but your inner realms was on the outer realms. You know, that means it, it was as if the priest had lived a pure outer realm life and impure inner realm life because his attention was all constantly on, you know, the, uh, the, the prostitution building. <laughs> so, so the thing is that it, it was as if it's, I am telling you, when it's multidimensional, you will not be judged based on one state of your mind, but in how every state of your mind you held yourself and the world held you and you cared to walk with. That's the biggest thing. This is the biggest thing that is going to bypass cruelty globally. Uh, care again to walk with the world you're only in once. Human beings are the angels of the natural realm. <clears throat> we have a superior intelligence when a turtle like in the middle of the ocean comes to a boat and the turtle has a piece of plastic on its neck and, and the people on the boat are like, oh my god, and they get rid of the plastic, technically angels of the natural world. And so we are like the angels and the archetype of the angel was the divine will and the whole idea of the angel was that it did not have a free will <clears throat> of its own. It was the truth's will. So when human beings are the angels of nature, we are the truth of another the higher dimension leaking into the lesser as an embodiment. We are a higher dimensional residue. Your body's life, the periodic table, will have to be returned at some point. <clears throat> that means we are renting the periodic table. We're renting karma as the periodic table. That means the I, we say we think we have karma, but it's not the case. A subject can't have karma, only an object can. <clears throat> an object in some sense it's karma it's like set in stone believe it or not it's like I knew <laughs> I knew that when I am alive where can life go and believe it or not beyond a human state of mind fear doesn't make sense even love in the humanized way we have it doesn't make sense <clears throat> that means it could be that this is the, um, just for a second fathom, whoever's listening, that we may be in an infinite universe and we may actually be infinite beings and we may have lied to ourselves because we had no choice because we saw the tip of the iceberg and we couldn't see the rest. So our species is left with the observable universe and any story of justification of any sort of morality <clears throat> or any sort of ethical system, it is coming to the stories human beings tell themselves. And here's the thing, that if you live uh, or if you find an honest world to live in, your story <clears throat> will 
will in some sense find its place in the world. There is something strange. It's like <clears throat> the YouTube. It's similar to how people, for example, uh, monetize online on YouTube. You have, you get a lot of views, and a lot of views. A tiny percentage of that, the tip of the iceberg of those views, becomes, for example, <clears throat> your um, uh, income. And I feel it is wise to treat. Ourself as the tip of the iceberg of a life that is beyond our observation. <clears throat> that means who said? Who said we have to be defined by shape? Because my whole effort is, let me tell you why I care for philosophy. Because it is our only way. Uh, it is one of the only <clears throat> pillars. Ideological angles that doesn't get rid of the unknown easy, easily. The sociologists can get rid of the unknown easily. The scientists can get rid of the unknown easily. The psychologists can get rid of the unknown easily. Even the analytical philosopher can get rid of the unknown easily. But the continental philosopher, like a child staring at a giant world, being like, okay. It's like uh, our beliefs have entered our own ears too soon. <clears throat> you know, fear comes and goes, and sometimes it comes in random moments. You know, I remember getting a huge insight on fear um, when I was young in middle school. There was um, this was in Iran in a school called Tehran International School. <clears throat> it was IB based, Swiss based, and in this school, I remember there was this kid who had failed the class, <laughs> and he was on in our class. And this kid was walking, and he was a really good soccer player though. <clears throat> and he was walking, and suddenly I wanted to imagine like those kind of like <clears throat> um, I I don't know the exact material, but it's like. Uh, imagine a, a ripped, uh, um, like um, chips bag. <clears throat> imagine a ripped bag of chips, and this kid is walking right towards the soccer field, and the wind blows this ripped bag of chips behind his right leg's uh, shin. Okay, that muscle, <clears throat> and. Uh, at the moment the wind hits the, 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 the ripped chips bag, hits his leg, he jumps into the air shouting. That means, can you imagine? That means what I saw was pretty much a chips bag hit someone's leg and this kid jumps up in the air shouting, <clears throat> right? And the kid turns around and he thought it was a cat. He says it literally, he thought it was the chips bag that grazed his leg. He thought it was a cat passing, touching him and he freaked out. And so that's the thing. It's all interpretation of sensory phenomena. There's we we can't even tell where our fear begins with. Imagine somebody sees something scary. <clears throat> in the outer realms, the fear is different. Fear is important information in the outer realms, but in the inner realms, it is usually delayed. It is um, uh, choosing to hide to something that is actually hidden to you, and until you go towards it, it doesn't become unhidden. You know, and there is no perfect way to live. When people understand this, then they will uh, ha uh, have the decency of the eyes of the few uh, of the fool to endlessly try new things. Okay, so in the chat section, Kushbu asks an interesting question, and Aziz gives an answer. <coughs> Uh, Kushbu says, beautiful subject, I feel we will heal a lot just by recognizing the violence. Is there a difference in between violence and cruelty? <clears throat> Aziz says, violence is control, cruelty <clears throat> is programmed actions. Okay, that's the, the, the second, second sentence is a, is a great 
<clears throat> I totally see what you mean. And the, your first sentence, I see what you mean. You don't mean control violence is like because a violent person is someone who's not in control, but a person becomes violent simply because they're not in control. <clears throat> you know, it's like violence is the overcompensation <clears throat> or a sort of dramatic response to the outer realms because the inner realms couldn't figure out. That means any time a person uh, intellectually is defeated, they become loud and violent. I'm not joking. <laughs> because if the person can solve or resolve a situation with their mind, it should never get to a violent fate. I mean, we're not animals anymore in the jungles. Like we have another faculty of intelligence that can discern, okay, is it worth uh, the conflict or is it not worth the conflict? <clears throat> and it could be that when our species, just imagine children waking up in this world and they're like, wait a minute, nobody knows what's going on. Do you know, they will give themselves such permission to create. And look at how incredible life is designed <clears throat> that, the ge that the genetics, the self-replicating gene goes forward in time, which means you learn from your own genetics evolution. <clears throat> that means all those people who have children, your, your genetics is teaching you now. Your, your more evolved genetics is teaching you. I don't know who was it that said that, but somebody said that when you become, I'm not a parent personally, but uh, somebody said when you become a parent, you start learning from like the soul of your child. Like it's not just, <clears throat> you know, you, you have a kid and you're just taking care of like a, 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 like a you know, small size robot. It, it's as if like um, the, the sensitivity to life's presence. It surpasses ideological containment. So Kushu, if I was to give you an answer, what's the difference between violence and cruelty? <clears throat> um, cruelty is being violent to someone's mind. Violence is um, <clears throat> being cruel to someone's body. You know, I thought about, let's say, um, extraterrestrials were here. There's a, there's a story that comes actually from Chinese thought, <clears throat> and it's the story of, um, excuse me, was it Chinese? No, 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 it wasn't Chinese. Uh, maybe it was from China. <clears throat> uh, I gotta brush up on my history of Japan and China, but <clears throat> anyways, pretty much there was this man back in the day Think of people who entertain all those people who are listening to me and you put you potentially are a, let's say UFO conspiracy entertainer. <clears throat> I'll tell you this. It's as if there, this story, this was in the Hagakura, the book of the samurai, actually. Uh, but anyways, the story is passed down by Yamamoto Sunetomo is simply that there was a man who loved dragons. His house was filled with pictures of dragons, statues of dragons, even his clothing had a dragon uh, on it, you know? <clears throat> and even he named his children and his daughter, like, I don't know, dragon names or something, <clears throat> you know? <clears throat> you know, <laughs> you know. even the guy had down, if, if the guy was alive now, he'd probably like, you know, buy like, you know, all Game of Thrones merchandise or something like. <laughs> but anyways, the guy, he wa he loved dragons to a point he did not love. He wanted to see a dragon so much that suddenly one day he opens, he pulls the curtains and there's a dragon outside of his house. Imagine a giant dragon head outside of your window. <clears throat> and they say that he dies out of shock. And this is why it's so important not to desire without understanding. Because a person can desire anything. A person can see someone beautiful, a beautiful human being, desire them, then be like, oh my God, what mind space did I just step into? You know, 
<clears throat> like a person has to make a discrimination of, of, of the choice of how human beings uh, hold themselves to themselves and how they hold others to themselves. For example, all those relationships we have, <clears throat> uh, let's say in regards to domestic violence happening, that's a sort of kind of hidden cruelty. And especially this is something that <clears throat> for, uh, for those people, like I'm an immigrant to Canada, <clears throat> I wasn't born here, but uh, I will tell you, I can tell you that there is this massive, giant wave of kind of shyness and timidness to know what is wrong. That means, think of it this way, that um, in the in West, in, mo in modern countries, there's this higher standard of living, <clears throat> so people don't accept um, the inefficient easily. Right, but now in countries that are developing, they have lower standards of living, and what can they do? The inefficiency is all around them, so they internally strengthen up. <clears throat> right, so it, it, it kind of it's like this this kind of it, its geometry would be it's as if like <clears throat> in developing countries life is harder, so the psychology of that person is used to a harder life. <clears throat> in in um, let's say developed countries, life is easier right <clears throat> but it's also easier to get sad and easier to emotionally be displaced and so when somebody from let's say a tougher life uh, comes to an easier life they're like they don't they suffer less <clears throat> so a strategy is either people wear armor and the cruelty doesn't become cruelty that means it's not hitting anybody so it's just <clears throat> mindless action but not uh, consequential in that room. That means, let's say somebody wants to be violent, and instead of our species saying you can't be violent, the species says there's two places human beings you can be violent, either in cyberspace or in the jungle, in the jungle where Tarzan is hanging out. You know, these are the only two places because humanity is too rare of a genetical event, too rare of a biological event to hurt itself, you know, to continue to hurt itself. It's too rare. You know, it's like, you know, human beings being violent. It's like this rare wine opened and it's just being poured, I don't know, like in the sink. You know? <laughs> Like there's no, can you imagine a person buy, buying a wine bottle and they're like, you know, you, do you drink? And the person's like, no. And they're like, why do you have the wine bottle? It's like, because I like the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> the person likes wine bottles, but not because of the wine. Yeah. <laughs> And if we become multidimensional, inner realm violence will eradicate. That's one victory. <clears throat> that was a very easy victory, you know, like one of those easy battles. The moment you realize you're not language, you can't get hit by language. Doesn't mean you, you don't become emotional, but it means that whatever sort of communication interprets as your state of mind, <clears throat> you will realize there's more to the show. And what if we got rid of cruelty and suddenly instead of the human being using 12% of his brain, we're like, no way. For example, let's say we, we got rid of uh, global cruelty, we bypassed cruelty somehow, or we <clears throat> built a civilization that didn't have it, or didn't need it. And so using 34% of our brain, it could be that our brain is actually meant to be used by the environment but if an idea of self uses the brain you access maybe like 12 percent or just a limited percentage of your brain the frontal lobe region and the center of the brain <clears throat> uh, let's say where there's a bridge between the, the different brain hemispheres Another strategy to bypass cruelty
is by making cruelty lame. This is the most hilarious strategy to bypass cruelty. <clears throat> that means cruelty is bad fashion. Violence, anger, these are emotions that we could call them. They are, <clears throat> uh, uh, you know, uh, they are from the savage world. You know, that means even though we are wearing clothing, we are named, we're standing on our two legs and we have stories of our life and uh, stories of our life and <clears throat> an incredible ability to multitask our own perceptions to, to, to themselves. When you realize life is actually an opportunity, a rare opportunity to love compared to hate. I mean, think about it. Let's say somebody inputs hateful energy. Let's say you wake up every day and you're like, I hate this place, you know? <clears throat> then you're going to walk somewhere and suddenly hatred is going to come to you and you're going to be like, why? And somebody's going to be like, buddy, you programmed that mindset into your moment. What's the universe going to do? You're inputting, <clears throat> like the echo comes back. And this is the most mysterious thing for me, you know, that if somebody just does one state of one modality, they have a sort of single pointed attention in the realm, there can literally be no karma. So here's the thing that beyond the humanized perception, it becomes the game of the dehumanized and the selfless. The being dehumanized doesn't mean you're selfless. You could have a selfish alien. <laughs> and I will tell you, there is so many... battles taking place psychological simulated battles it's like hearing this ancient term where they said <clears throat> everyone is fighting a battle you cannot see so what does that mean that means everyone is in a battlefield but they're in a battlefield that is mind forged that means if if if, a, if you suddenly realized you were God, but not the a, a religious God, <clears throat> and even surpassing Spinoza's God. You were the God that no longer needed the word God. You were being the universe without hesitation. This state can be attained, will be attained in the year <clears throat> 2122. I can see rivers of human personality. It's going to become a, a unique phase where you're, there's going to be body hopping. <clears throat> that means as the mind starts, as the minds of human beings collectivize and comprehend each other, it's more like a river, as if energy, because it cannot be created or destroyed, it cannot change location. If it cannot change location, it cannot transform. The fact that in the first law of thermodynamics is wrong. first law of thermodynamics is wrong or all scientists believe in the soul because literally it's the same same geometry dear listeners we are on an island when we forget this fact that we're in, in this galactic island And it is no longer survival of the fittest. We have moved past that age. 
survival of the life conscious. I am telling you, whoever you are, <clears throat> uh, there is a, something unique that happens on this planet where you, uh, for a moment, as if uh, uh, for a second, put every story of meaning of your life like a video game on pause and stare at how meaningless existence is without movement. And then you will notice the movement creates the meaning. <clears throat> um, and in the year 2122, um, it, that body hopping can now be, now be explained <clears throat> as a mind infusion. What does that mean? That means imagine a group of people running. And now imagine as these group of human beings that are running. Or let me say it even in a more sophisticated kind of... <clears throat> um, in a heavier context, let's say soldiers in the future, <clears throat> you can totally see this under the sci-fi angle, that, so, the, that soldiers are probably, like they, there's this idea that it's a unit, right? <clears throat> let's say we have four soldiers and they become a unit. <clears throat> now this unit can have one mind, so their communication suggests the access to each other's mind sphere. So imagine, okay, I'll, I'll change the analogy. A group of people are running in a marathon. I, so imagine in the year 2122, the consciousness of the eyes of the people running in the marathon can pass. That means in the year 2122, if there's a marathon, nobody's going to be the winner. Everybody's going to be the winner because there is no <clears throat> mind veil. An advanced civilization, I explained this in this book I'm writing, called Civilization 2.0. <clears throat> in it, I um, think of the analogy of the tip of an iceberg. Now imagine we are, we have noticed the observable universe is the tip of the iceberg, and we, starting from the peak of the iceberg, <clears throat> which is the free will, the conscious free will of the observable universe, The advanced civilization, our most advanced civilization, which is going to be an endlessly, <clears throat> technically, it would be like an invention that is creating inventions endlessly. It would be an advanced civilization endlessly advancing itself, so technically it would be inconceivable. That would be another way of saying that we, start, we went to the edge of the iceberg where we found the unknown waters. <clears throat> and we continued through and to discover the rest of the human nature.
we must not fear the potential that is accessible. <clears throat> Whoever you are, whatever moment in the space-time continuum you find yourself, you will find potentials where you find the unknown variables. That means a person may feel <clears throat> like a winner. That's an idea. A person may feel like a loser. That is an idea. Now, if they ask themselves, regardless of if they feel like a winner or a loser, okay, how am I a loser? They will go to the edge of the unknown. If they ask themselves, how am I the winner? They will go to the edge of the unknown. <clears throat> and the moment you notice an unknown variable, whatever you knew before has the allowance to <clears throat> re-emerge in a greater context. We are an endless emergence process. There's no such thing as death. All we have ever known is simulation. All we have ever known is emergence. Life is emergence. That means the body dies, but life, we, we can't comprehend it outside of emergence. <clears throat> emergence is one of the most important words, especially before the world bec uh, becomes an emergence. Everything can be understood to a certain capacity. And, you know, I just thought about there's different types of cruelty I can even think of right now. <clears throat> a person can be cruel to, this, to themselves. Let's call that self-cruelty. So there are different types of cruelty. A person can be cruel to others, we call that other-cruelty. A person can be cruel to their world, <coughs> and so that means you can be cruel to objects, and you can be cruel to subjects. Now, if I, like, let me tell you how easy it is to be cruel subjectively. You can pull the rug off of the feet of any system when you realize the void. That's the power of non-duality in Advaita. <clears throat> the same liberation that comes, the same wave of uh, noticing that hits you where the person's like, I am energy just being here. There is no who to die. There is no who to free. There is no who to have truth. There is no who to exit a simulation. <clears throat> but to the mind there is. That means imagine this body where like it's the periodic table. Now imagine your mind was also like a mind table. <clears throat> you know, a periodic mind table. Okay? A periodic table of the mind. That's better way to say it. And so that means you had no choice. That means imagine our body is just limited alphabet. Our mind is a is limited elemental alphabet. Our mind is a limited in, subjective humanized personality alphabet. <clears throat> and then there's just watching. The watcher. And I don't know because a, a very few people write emails to me about how these talks are coming across. So I have... <clears throat> Uh, I don't know. How the other side of the mountain <clears throat> feels about the tunnels in the mountain. Everything is filled with an ability to know it from an angle. Humanity has lied to itself because it had no choice, because what do you do in a void so vast? It's as if you see existence, they're like, oh my god, look at, look at, <clears throat> what was the number? Like a billion trillion stars uh, in uh, our observable universe. That is like one with 12 zeros in front of it. That's how many stars there are.
Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, what am I saying? Uh, 15. 15 zeros. 15 zeros, yeah. So existence, you pull the thread, it's endless. <clears throat> you go to try to pull the, see what clues you get from your mind. And the mind is clueless. It's like, it's, it's like, sorry, buddy, I just arose. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so we are literally left with the sword and shield for the multidimensional being. The mind <coughs> Guys, I just accidentally wrote uh, the word sword, but I wrote the word sword with an L between the R and the D. A world of swords, sword. <laughs> It's just intelligence being active right now anyone listening to this your intelligence is <clears throat> being piloted <clears throat> through some narrative stabilized narrative of your life and perhaps we can even be cruel to the void that's a that's a new concept. <clears throat> that means stop being cruel to emptiness by illusion and endlessly, you know, imagining worlds and the, <clears throat> you know, it's like study how objects are being subjects and study how subjects are being objects, and you have surpassed the educational system of our modern times. You will be ahead of it because the educational system is just looking at how objects become subjects. And I'll tell you, this is one thing, there is something where <clears throat> I would say um, time is also, I don't want to say time is cruel because you never know what time is doing. It's as if <clears throat> some moments in life the person's like, why, you know, gods, why the universe have you forsaken me? And in other moments, like in this person can have even the same angle. Oh yeah, the universe is doing something I don't know. Okay, you know, I hope you know what you're doing, university. <laughs> and so there is a response as the invisible viewer to a subjectively visible life and then how you feel about your inner life suggests how much love you have that means this is how you know <clears throat> who in the civilization is free what really free being free means where a person's inner life <clears throat> does not hinder their outer life It, they are in sync. That means people are like, oh my God, Jungian synchronicity, what a rare coincidence. No, that coincidence is the natural state. This is the rare, this is the, <clears throat> we are We are in the rare state. We are, we have not caught the grand rhythms of this realm yet. What that means is imagine <clears throat> there's these giant waves, invisible waves simultaneously going on in this world, okay? Now these waves, every civilization that has rose, their technology is based on which rhythm they have found first. chat section says human beings are the only one living in the wrong vibration no 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 no. you can't do anything wrong 
technically because the subjective angle of what is it wrong to to whom is it wrong who did you wrong it becomes an endless paradigm of different eyes seeing the same thing <coughs> so i'm not saying it's if we are in the wrong vibration don't tell yourself a story of your own defeat and sorry to be so intense for now but I'm, I'm, let me tell you why because it's not something wrong it's literally we haven't surfed yet it's like is a surfer wrong for not surfing the ocean waves no it just hasn't attempted the higher rhythms of one's not own intelligence but re change the uh, uh, replace the letters and own becomes now and when the now is now the letters change again and you have one so it starts with O W N, goes to N O W, then becomes W O N. Wow, guys, I think I have, I have written the most incredible sentence in the English language. One, uh, no, 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 actually, it's totally different. Okay, I want you to write these letters, O, M, okay, here, I'll write it in chat. So. <clears throat> um, This is a letter-linked word of three different ways the letters O, W, N can create words. And guys, this letter-linking is a concept I've uh, coined in the sense that you can take the last letter of any word and the first letter of any other word and if you link them they become the same so you see the 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 end of the word own is the same n as the word now and the W of the word now is the same W of the word one. And these three, you know, there's a word here that we can, so we have O-W-N. We have, <clears throat> okay, this is going to take too long, but <clears throat> anyways, back to the topic. A, pe a person, did you know, in their inner realms can give up instantly, but they can also come back instantly. The person's like, I give up, and the world was like, no, don't do it. And the person's like, okay, okay, I don't give up, all right, in that case, yeah. <laughs> Didn't realize, you know, the word, the world cared, you know. <laughs> This is the only way these three words, own, one, and now, can be, they're the same, made of the same letters, and they can make a sentence. I think own, one, now is the greatest sentence, one of the greatest sentences in the English language.
Og vi giver dig evig mest svar i alt. Actually, hold on, guys. The sentence should be one now. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm, I'm brainstorming here. Let me tell you why. <clears throat> okay. Um, so much right now that I gotta just dedicate like five minutes to figuring this out. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I let letter linked it own now one. <clears throat> I'm trying to create a sentence with these words that is uh now one own. I think that would be the only way it would work. Where now, one, that means the now one. Okay, let's move past this. I gotta dedicate. <clears throat> here, I'm gonna make a note here. <laughs> the audience is like, what's going on? Where's this roller coaster going? <laughs> Back to the topic, um, I'm, I'm just trying to see um, where the unknown edges of the known observable universe is, and that's most likely where the purpose of all our lives is going. The most ancient craft, the most ancient thing, uh, action human beings have been doing is exploration. I feel we have a ridiculous <clears throat> genetical memory when we go into the explorer's mindset, literally, like, uh, when the person cares for what is in the unknown, regardless of how the known is painted, they will still move towards the unknown. This is why you can tell a child not to press a button, and that child would press the button. You know, you see that in shows. Because the unknown pulls us. The unknown is like uh, the magnetic, a magnetic pull of a reverse dimension. It's like the other side of the yin yang symbol is pulling the, this side.
you know uh, institutions can be cruel to ideological systems can be cruel to um, I, I mentioned earlier time can be cruel uh, a person's past can be cruel to their future a person's future can be cruel to their past a person can be cruel in the present and that's the hardest cruelty why because it's universal <clears throat> because when you see it's like there's a sort of emotional uh, discriminatory force we call conscience in human psychology and if you wonder what conscience is conscience is a backup system for your humanity So when a something cruel or violent is done, this backup system of your human psyche starts, the alarms start going off. And if the person doesn't listen to those alarms, and let's say you're a person who keeps doing something violent, vicious, cruel, you mutate your own nature. <clears throat> you let an action, you let an um, a, um, a behavior render your nature different. Because ultimately, the purpose of life is to fill the time. I mean, what else do we do? <clears throat> and advanced civilization is like, that's the best game we could play here in the world. Best game in the outer realms. The best game you can play in the inner realms is the concept of enlightenment. <clears throat> it is, uh, or, or um, how she, Ramana Maharshi said, self-inquiry, where you start on this path of wondering about what the world is, wondering about <clears throat> uh, the eyes of the mystic, and your sense of self, the ego that is running after truth, like a hungry <clears throat> mule chasing a carrot on a stick. Um, Sri Ramana she says, your ego is like the stick that you use <clears throat> to fix all the sticks in the fireplace and at the end you throw that stick that well, you know what that means that means uh, my life that whatever i'm building up to i know that at the end of it that's the ultimate thing i'm letting go of because there's no greater truth than just going forth That means uh, uh, the only time we should fear extinction, inner extinction, is if the species has more reasons to discontinue itself than continue itself naturally. <clears throat> Let's say in the future we all become robots. Could we say that's extinction? Do you see how arbitrary the notion of our minds are? If we become robots, technically no problem. If, it, if we didn't have this uh, superior idea of the free will, the free will is like a, a mask for the term for the unknown, you know, which is, is another way of seeing the idea of soul. You know, and even though I talk about, let's say, being in a state of mind that's fearless, being as easy as being in a state of fear, <clears throat> but one can never say if fear goes away completely. You know, a person... can be in a dangerous neighborhood and feel fear, that way, a person can open their wallet and see nothing there and feel, feel fear that way. There's so many types. <clears throat> and the fear... It is, it is the result of the conscious rebellion 
or the rebellion of consciousness to the void. That means we can say there's even three levels of honor when it comes to fear. Because if cruelty is appearing because one side is fearing the other side, so they're hitting first, you know. Let's say there is a cruelty that is, it's like the thoughts of cruelty, cruel thoughts, but also cruel actions. Then there's a state where there's cruel thoughts, but there isn't cruel actions. Then there's a state where there isn't cruel thoughts and there is no cruel actions. A state where there is no cruel thoughts and no cruel actions, this is the ideal. We want it to be there, but if we treat the world like nobody's cruel in this world, we're gonna be, we will become the gullible fool in the marketplace. <clears throat> that means it's... <laughs> to exist a temporary beings reasons to existence is to continue existing it could be the case that there's no such thing as human intelligence there was intelligence as space first and this intelligence as space got bored of being space it's like for how long can I just be like a universal mind it's like <clears throat> I need a vacation and bah, like civilizations arose creatures <laughs> Imagine right now there was an invisible intelligent cloud. How would we communicate it? All our civilization's knowledge is based on visible phenomena. Excuse me, not visible, tangible phenomena. That means a person can have dreams like the person's like, oh my god, I believed in God, but then the atheist slapped this idea out of my head, but wait a minute, all my dreams and ambitions are arbitrary too, so does that mean my dream of the future is as imaginary as any idea? You see, it's like we forget, we are accessing a dimension of potential and then <clears throat> becoming a kinetic effect. So potential cause and a kinetic effect. This is like the transformation. This is how psychology is happening. Psychology is happening on two levels. There's two films. When we forget the inner film, nothing makes sense. Oh my God, why should matter be moving? What, where does it get the information to move this way? <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> because the, here's the thing. One thing biology can never explain how biology is aware of itself it's instantaneous how do you explain an instantaneous moment please neurologists professors of the realm tell me how do we in some sense uh validate an instantaneous truth that means how do you measure in time and space something that is instantaneous <clears throat> there is no measurement to just a single point That means the universe isn't a big deal, our eyes in it are. And so if our eyes find themselves to be significant, 
do they deserve then to see the world as significant? That means a person looks at their family and they're like, okay, <clears throat> those who dishonor my family, like there's a line. There's a line that shouldn't be crossed, for example. Right, so the person has that discretion, but why doesn't the person have that discretion for there's my, my human family, the family of my species, all those other creatures out in the realm that look like me, they have the same skeletal structure. <clears throat> we are fighting over imagination, wasting time in reality, not building an advanced civilization where in our minds we're already uh, sitting there. And you know how cruelty bypasses cultural, uh, not a civil war, but a, a cultural renaissance. This is freedom. Because I am telling you, I saw this documentary. It gives me goosebumps to even talk about it, but it's important. People in especially Western countries don't realize the savageness <clears throat> of human nature <clears throat> in regards to ideological disposition that has valued uh, not freedom first, but pa what the past wanted. That means this is the biggest difference. Some of our ancestors, they scolded their children, but other ancestors were like, go and be you. That means this is the, oh God, how do I say it? I saw this documentary, they call it the concept of the honor killing, and it's, tra it's a tragedy of human civilization. It is a glitch in the system of morality, <clears throat> and it is the most dehumanized action that it should stop. And it's this notion that it's like, <clears throat> I pretty much saw this video where this girl had left, I don't know if it was in Pakistan, the video, where it was from. I don't know where the video was from, I don't know, it could have been some other country. <clears throat> but anyways, in the video it showed, the video was showing this, um, uh, what do you call it, this woman, uh, this, uh, this girl who had gone back home and to her father and uncle, and she had dishonored the family by getting running away and getting married, and the uncle and the father had decided to attack her with like a <clears throat> weapon, and it was messed up, right? Because of she had dared on and did dishonor the family. It was as if like the human dimension was forgotten. It was dehumanized uh, artificial human honor, <clears throat> you know? And so in this video, and I think the video was in India, maybe, I don't know where it was, like, but there was a cow in the video. And guys, I, in my eyes, can you, can you imagine watch, watching a YouTube video and just out of shock, not tears of sorrow, not tears uh, of joy, tears of shock, tears of disbelief. The cow in the video attacks the father and uncle who are killing who are attempting to kill this girl in the video, you know? And nothing happens in the video. The cow saves and people suddenly run in and suddenly the thing is stopped. But it was the savageness of, hu of the human mind, you know, that it's as if we are blindly honoring the past, not realizing we're destroying the future's eyes. And this world, what I just told you, do you know how much more savage, intense, messed up stuff is going on the planet? And even compared to that, you go back in the past and you realize we all were savage animals. Like nobody was excluded. We all were messed up back in the day if we were to compare it to the morality of now. So what this means is a new global reform, a new collective inspiration for human beings to be human once again, but this time with minds that won't falter easily. Just because alters have given promises, you know, beyond time. There's so much more to life than we know. So for me, I'm like, okay, system, we're in an inefficient system. There is, um, uh, <clears throat> 
um, uh, anti-evolutionary forces in, in, this, in society and culture. <clears throat> and these anti-evolutionary forces, uh, in some sense, uh, within them hold decent human beings. That means a human being could be acting cruel, but they could be responding in the past. Did you know that? <clears throat> this is something it took me a while to catch on to, that a person could be violent and savage, but it could not be them. It could just be their mismanagement of their psyche and their environment. And so this is where, in some sense, an advanced civilization will no longer be like, you did something bad, bad you're going to get punished. You did something good, you're going to get rewarded. No, 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 that's old school. The advanced, the advanced communicators, the leaders of the future advanced civilization. <clears throat> I'm just a newspaper boy. They, the leaders that will come for the advanced civilization in the future, they will not, they will first of all love human beings. That's the thing that's uh, going to keep us human. Love is going to keep us human. Hate is the quickest way to uh, forget you're a human being. Hate is a dissension. Who was it? It was uh, There was this incredible quote from Martin Luther King where he's like, I have learned, let me find the quote. Exactly. Check out this quote. Martin Luther King Jr. says, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Do you see? Hating someone is a burden. So you see, if a political leader comes that people hate, it's not that like this, anything happens the, the issue is that people feel a burden is on them do you see and so the greatest leaders of mankind are here to unburden human living because why why carry the giant back, backpack unnecessary backpack you know so i am telling you hate inefficient strategy love efficient strategy uh, uh, choose the love algorithm <clears throat> and keep the variables of the world 50-50 unknown if you're emotional. If you're, em if you're stable in, in when it comes to your emotions, and that literally means you become emotionally free when you accept your past. Those people who can't accept their past, their emotions will haunt them. I'm telling you, that's how I, I'm able to be super silly all the time. <laughs> like I could, I could in any moment be see chaos, and then I'm like, okay, who invited the chaos, and then laugh about it, you know. <clears throat> so there's, I'm telling you, there's something that if your emotions, if you're, if you accept your past, that's the only way you can renounce it. So all those yogis who are trying to get out of the simulation of materialism, their past, they haven't accepted their past because the only way they're seeing what's present now is based on their memory of the past. So it's this hilarious thing that until you accept your past, you can't accept who you are now. You're going to endlessly want to, uh, you know, um, chase the, you know, carrot of desire at the end of the stick. And the only way the mule chasing the carrot at the end of the stick can get the carrot is the mule has to change dimensions. The mule has to lie down on the ground, the carrot is, is, it falls on the ground, then from the ground the mule goes against the carrot. That is the only way we can, uh, in some sense, in, at least that's an algorithm, a response to entering paradise. You don't enter paradise <clears throat> because you desire it. You enter a paradise by realizing earth is in it. Paradise enters you. You don't enter paradise. Because if you enter paradise, <clears throat> it's a pair of dice. It's a probability game. That means it's not being easy and individual. It's overwhelming. Not everybody can function in individual consciousness. 
you know, and those people who do, it's a great testament for me personally in the outer realms, <clears throat> like, um, a person is always who they allow themselves to be. And that allowance comes from the freedom inherent in the context of the world where their concept comes from. I am only a person because I am detached from the earth. If I was connected to the earth, literally my feet were like the earth. <coughs> That's hilarious, you know, but, but, <laughs> but imagine like if you were the earth, there would be no human life. That means we have to disconnect ourselves from the planet to be individuals, but then uh, in order to survive, we have to connect ourselves to the planet, this endless connection, disconnection. So I would say survival of the fittest is literally connecting your USB to the, like imagine the USB wire from yourself, <clears throat> you know, to the... This idea can go so so much further in the sense like if right now the world is unknown how do I know myself so technically all that we we, we can be hundred percent sure of an unknown self we can never be hundred percent sure of a known self so the educational system giving information about what we know of the self is doing a disservice to all the unknown that should be explored. That means the educational system has been, I don't want to say a disaster, but has been a disservice. Usually you would think uh, educational systems need to serve, right? Let me tell you how. Because <clears throat> think of all the explorers that were cloned by past information out of their ability to be a new human being. That is the failure of the educational system out of a fear of economical survival. <clears throat> you become possessed by your uh, profession to own possessions that will possess you. You see, it's, it's a person can be possessed by an object. Did you know that? <clears throat> you know, like that means imagine like they called the exorcist and the exorcist came and let's say the local exorcist back in the day, you know, and they're like, this person's possessed. And the person's like, okay, he's not showing any signs of possession. And the person, but he's like, no, 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 no. He's possessed by an object. This person can't stop eating like, I don't know, cake. They're possessed by cake. You know, or this person can't stop smoking. They are possessed by smoking. You know, <clears throat> that means it, it, it's like where the attention is locked on, or where it has uh, linked itself to and has to find a way to unlock. <clears throat> there are so many ways that we are gonna learn what it means to be a human being in the future, based on how the future walked. That means I, I felt I was um, <clears throat> uh, running alone in this, in, in like this. A giant field and then I realized I am just like an uh, early farmer I'm like the for one of the early farmers who, who got to the field quick you know earlier than the rest and what I mean by this is that um, the more authorized behavioral authorization for the multidimensional there is the more the way that energy that means it is true a billion human beings living on a planet but at the same time the whole species is simultaneously an energetic event. Like we can't ignore, we are spheres of energy. <clears throat> that means if from another dimension, like think of it, if a snake saw you, like imagine infrared, okay? Let me, let me show you a picture here. And here's the interesting thing, guys. We have to imagine reality. That means when somebody speaks, when communication is us being able to imagine how something is real for someone else and uh, vice versa. Let's see if there's an infrared of a uh, cake. No, there, nobody's taking an infrared view of a cake. Okay. <clears throat> Probably 
not enough heat, but okay, this is a good picture. So um, I want people to look at the video's wallpaper. And uh, this picture I'm gonna put there, this is infrared vision, right? So this is kind of like something close to how we would see ourselves as energy, right? That means it's like color is like another skin of energy. Numerology is another skin of energy. Uh, language is another skin of energy. Um, another container of it. And uh, shape, design, geometry is also another. <clears throat> and um, so if we see things like infrared now i want you to imagine eight billion human beings just as energy we're energy right now energy is talking to you and energy is listening yeah. so it's energy management so we gotta literally have the whole species do tai chi like you know those incredible old people in the park who are like I don't know, uh, being precursors of Dragon Ball Z mythology, right? Like, <laughs> the story of the world, the story of the self, the story of others, and the story of the realm beyond shape design and color and depth in the space. I feel I have a, a experienced um, every day I'm trying to see if there's another state of mind I haven't experienced. You see, it's like imagine <clears throat> people are fascinated of, of, let's say you go to Wonderland and trying out different rides. So now imagine your brain is a wonderland. It's where the land of wonder is really taking place. <laughs> you know, that means the brain is um, a studio, a private studio. It's your private office. That means it's like if you don't have the finances to have an office, you could be anywhere in the world and in your inner realms, you could just close your eyes and go into your inner realm office. And this is just a testament to an ability of concentration after a while being able to keep the inner landscape there without movement. That means right now for me, every day giving these talks, it's super easy for me to overlay. I can literally see, it's super, it's super easy for me whether my eyes are open or closed to notice my inner realms. And they are occurring a distance of two meters diagonally above me. That's where I get sensation wise. That means it's like when the person's like, where's my body? Oh yeah, like, here's my body. You know, and the person's like, where's my thoughts? My sensation of where the inner film, I keep telling the listeners that I'm translating, this inner cinematic language is taking to me a sensation of diagonally two meters from me. So for me, my mind is not in my body, you know, it can be non-local, you know, that means your mind doesn't have to be in your body, your mind could be like, a, <clears throat> you could be in a new country, but your mind could be in another country, right, and this is how globalization is leading to cultural uh, integration, which technically means uh, more and more, it's becoming our own responsibility to paint an advanced realm rather than feeling it has to just be, um, it has to be, uh, it's going to just happen, you know. That means, you know, honestly, I feel the whole species is being, um, in from a multidimensional angle, lazy. That's it. Every human being, if they could fathom as far as they can and they lived in accordance to that effort i will tell you watch what happens to your karma you know what i'm telling you karma is about uh, i would say effort and the purity of that effort being unconditional that means for me 
energy that you have to wield, it takes energy from your body. But energy that you just notice, so think as if um, I'm in, if, if there was, I don't know right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming if there was a sort of a brain, a, um, a sort of uh, instant MRI of my brain as I'm giving this talk, you would see most likely a most likely a very um, sm I don't know I don't know how but I think it's a very I think I'm in order not to waste the body's energy um, very little needs to be moved so what I mean by this is that I'm kind of being an antenna right now but an antenna for what and that's where the question is not story of you know what lurks in the shadows of man's confusion you know? will not defeat cruelty but love will diffuse cruelty until design comes in what that means is that means imagine two people loving and hating each other Right, and suddenly a designer walks into the room. Imagine <clears throat> there's two kings. <clears throat> let's say in a parallel universe, there's still kings in the world, and let's say two kings were fighting. And this, uh, <clears throat> let's say there was also this profession of geometry had become so, its own branch of study, and there were people on the planet known as geometric geometricians, you know, or geometric. Uh, A designer, anyways, I'll carry on with the metaphor. A designer goes between these, this, let's say, king and queen that are hating each other, hating and loving each other. Or let's say love and hate are fighting like a king and queen, and a designer walks into the room, and the designer for is still until the love and hate are like, yo, what's this designer doing in this room? Love and hate, imagine, just personified in this metaphor. Love and hate are like, why is there a designer in the room? And the designer is just waiting. The designer is waiting to see when will this love and hate stop? When will they notice the presence in the room of the spontaneous arrival into worldhood? There is a presence here. This presence is not something you can have a relationship of language with. It surpasses it. The way you can only know it is by being it. That means you can be a collective being. You can never do anything as a collective being. It doing it associates, um, uh, um, uh, plants a flag into individual. <clears throat> plants the flag of individualism so the designer or let's see and uh, see another version the, the king and the queen love and hate are fighting the designer comes into the room and scolds yin and yang and says do you not see you are reflective designs <clears throat> and you're in the same circle that is the true wisdom of all royal thought that the kingdom was the king, was the crown of the king. That means if the kingdom was failed, the crown, the king was wearing a bad crown. That means the whole idea was <clears throat> the king's ego was linked to the advancement of the kingdom.
you know what it is? It's like a designer plus an explorer. Oh my god, this is a ridiculous word. What a, a deck explore. A deck explore sign. <laughs> What a word. Okay. So guys, I thought about linking the designer and the explorer and this is what I came up with. Life is just how we look, how we are seeing our sight. We don't know what the mind is, but we have minds. We live in a civilization where we say, 
<coughs> people are in their minds, they are not out of their minds. <coughs> that means the concept of the person, people, is simulated in the idea of the mind, which is the simulation of the brain. And the brain, the concept of the brain, is the simulation of the mind. What if the future was here and we didn't notice it? What if the, like the light bulb, when Edison made the light bulb, <coughs> it was like, or Alexander the, or Graham Bell made the phone, it was like, no way we could have hold this whole time, we could have done this, you know? <coughs> so the inventor extracts what is actually potentially there and what that means is the potential of the future is accessible <clears throat> we can experience the real potential of the future but we cannot experience the future and the future can't experience their own potential they will be their potential so if the future is our potential we can know the potential of the future <clears throat> and if we are the potential of those before us we can never know them their view, you know. Lorna says we just need to link it with no ego involved. Ego is 3D, gets us stuck. No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with the ego. It's an Iron Man suit. You make ego a problem, then the ego is going to have a problem with you, you know. <laughs> you know, some people even say the ego is like an egg. If you, if it breaks from the inside, there is life. There's a new life. If it breaks from the outside, the, there is no life. And the ultimate humanity is like, it's not going to be, it's going to be an ocean of human intelligence. I mean, like. So we're headed towards an ocean where drops now and drops are uh, causing each other to evaporate instead of joining to become a river. Just imagine there was a time traveler that came back um, and <clears throat> went to Einstein. <clears throat> or imagine Einstein's future self came back to Einstein and he had a teleportation machine and a giant let's say this time machine was a spaceship like the spaceship had time travel <clears throat> you know and it's uh I don't know it was on discount the time travel option in the spaceship <laughs> <clears throat> but let's say this this time Albert Einstein's future self comes back with you a time tra traveling spaceship that's stealth because that's the biggest error. You shouldn't you shouldn't time travel with a time machine that's not stealth, you know, that you can't instantly teleport into. That means it's so stupid time travelers and shows time traveling back then running away back to their time machine. It's like how stupid. Like the time machine should always either be there or you should be able to teleport into it at any moment. That means if, if a giant dragon appeared, you could just instantly, a giant, a dinosaur appeared, let's say you went that, that, that far back in time, you know, and you're like, okay, it's like in the middle of the jaws of the dinosaur, you press your watch and you instantly teleport, you know, back into the time machine. <coughs> or at least you have a freeze time option, you know. So let's say Albert Einstein's future comes and has a tele this spaceship has teleportation and time traveling. <clears throat> and so with the teleportation, he goes and gets every scientist. And literally Albert Einstein's future self is just <clears throat> abducting all the scientists in the world to have him in one room, imagine. <laughs> this is such a hypothetical idea, but just yeah, entertain it. <clears throat> And what happens is, if I'm just pretty much saying, imagine if the internet had come sooner. 
Imagine how much genius would have been preserved. Now imagine if the internet of the future, the, the future integrative collective platforms, right now the internet is allowing, okay, like we can type in social media, you can update a photo and you can, I don't know, live stream your voice and you can also live stream video. <clears throat> but in, if it becomes in a way where we can all be in the same room, imagine in the future when you live stream something, you're, we are all in the same cyber universe. <clears throat> that means the concept of live streaming is being in one digital universe. Our greatest challenge is to create an incredible human backup system while we're human for the future generations. And human beings living as their uh, as their DNA's like authorization, it becomes incredible. You, it's like this world is not here to <clears throat> just have human beings born, and we're like, okay, you know, forget everything you know, and this ideology is going to become you from now on. And the person's like, why? And we're like, I don't know. Our ancestors lived this way. It's like how the program is. And at some point, that person's going to be like, no, it's not worth it to fit into. A, a, a blind, uh, not blind, but an inefficient system. I'm telling you, it's not worth it sometimes. And this could be the ignorance, this could be ignorance, this could be fear, any justification. A person can be like, you have an ego if you think you have an ego. You know, if you think you don't have an ego, like you have an ego when you say that. <clears throat> it's like, sure, anytime you speak, you require to be in an individual position. It's like what we are calling ego and like this, uh, you know, higher self and all this is like, <clears throat> that is new a new age distraction from the mystics. Uh, field that means when dear human being are you going to realize you're unknown to yourself and it's okay and being a human being I feel it just means you're stepping into the unknown in every moment and your effort suggests what happens your effort and your decency which has to mean your overall response so an indecent person is willing to see, for example, others fail for their ent ent entertainment. Like, you know, there's a lot of that going on in culture. Like the mob mentality is like, oh, you know, at least, you know, the extroverts are communicating, you know. <laughs> <coughs> but it's like, even though it's, it's, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, uh, because proper, the idea of propaganda is it goes very deep. For example, I'll, I'll share something from, you know, a lesson in political science with you. <clears throat> people, some people uh, look at political systems, and the political system is an expression of a personality, believe it or not. That means the leaders of nations are having a subconscious effect on how the children of that nation want to rise. That means any child whose mind was like, I want to be a politician one day, the politician that's in power is a is being an, a, a reference for that child's mind <clears throat> of what it means, for example, to be a politician. So I'm saying the psychology of the politician influences how the political system displays or translates into the cultural dimensions. <clears throat> so, some people considered that, okay, what was going on to the psychology of hum humanity during <clears throat> the, uh, after World War I in Germany, right? <clears throat> and so there was this critique that for example, Hitler, his strategy of, in some sense, controlling the people was, in some sense, just check this out. The propaganda be became that human beings don't really know what story to tell themselves. So that they extract stories from their personal behaviors, from the behaviors of others, from uh, culture, from stories, from events, we're pretty much like, again, survivor mode, whatever image you find, okay, where am I in this dark room trying to touch the walls of uh, seeing this reality, <clears throat> you know?
if the audience could see me right now, I'm trying to sit cross-legged on a chair that has a very little sitting space in it. So uh, <clears throat> who says you know practical yoga is dead? Yeah. <laughs> Cruelty can stop if the person realizes their inner realms is not the other person. That's it. It's as easy as that. Someone in the chat, Valerie in the chat section says, do the lotus position, there isn't enough room. There's literally like, <clears throat> uh, the only, <laughs> it's like a three dimensional zigzag, literally the way I'm kind of. <clears throat> Anyways. Imagine children being born in the future and currently people are like, you know, they can't wait to go to sleep, <laughs> you know, get some rest, you know, because it's the, the civil, living in a civilization is a burden for now. It should be way easier than this. So our mind has a lot of ability to um, <clears throat> work, you know. I feel ultimately it's like the greatest honor is just realizing what you are. And you know, I have free will right now, but it doesn't mean I'm using it. <laughs> that means even though I'm saying these words, but conscious free will, that means it's like, what's the difference between concentration and a distraction? Can someone tell me? Isn't a distraction you concentrating on something else other than what you wanted to concentrate on? That means everything is concentration. It's pretty much where the attention goes. It's like the person it was fearing the world and they're like, okay, been there, done that. And then they love the world and they're like, okay, 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 been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> then the person's like, what else is left? And again, novelty is the future's microphone. Our species hasn't activated <coughs> completely uh, to inner film surfing. If people realize this, you will realize your mind is a free information generator. It's, it's, and what does that mean? That means it is classifying sensory, meaningless sensory perception into four.
And honestly, I mean, what is cruelty? You know? <clears throat> At least comedians can find humor in it. That's that's one event. That's a one thing cruelty has, right? <clears throat> that means it's like um, comedians are do, are providing stand-up comedians in the world. Like I realized there was this giant thing going on in the West where comedians, their souls were under judgment by the, <clears throat> you know, cultural uh, 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 force. <laughs> <clears throat> and for a moment, I was like, look at what the comedian is doing, right? In the middle of the meaningless. It's like finding something that's meaningless, more meaningless. Do you know that means it's like comedy humor is a strange alchemical strategy to make meaningful suffering into meaningless joy. <laughs> I, I, I'm not kidding. I'm telling you, it's a, and it's all about communication. That means on some level, I, I just feel the future. They're just going to teach communication. That's it. There's no, there's no branches of study. All of that is modalities of how the mind is communicating. Everything is communication, I'm telling you. There, this is like the future. What else can minds do? We're, com we're going to communicate as much as we have biological bodies. And then if the communication can become on a teleport level, that means imagine... Uh, if the moment I had all these thoughts that I'm sharing, <clears throat> all the, this inner film that I'm transcribing, <clears throat> it, it, it's as if, imagine instantly when I became conscious of the inner landscape, you also instantly became aware of it in your inner realms. Then there would be no reason for me to speak. So if we are all one mind in the future, nobody can lose. We, if somebody is behaving like inefficiently, we all are behaving inefficiently if the future is one mind. <clears throat> so anyways we bypass cruelty by like you know getting over that shit I don't know what is that <clears throat> cruelty is, is, is like the past trying to make it to the future not realizing it's actually denying it and cruelty also can should be bypassed with life sensitivity right because this is something where people have to realize, like I remember I was in the subway in Canada and there was an intoxicated father talking to his child in the subway. And it was a busy subway, it was filled, right? But the father was intoxicated and the father was holding the child's hand, uh, arm, very firmly and just mumbling something to the child, right? <clears throat> but it wasn't the father wasn't being angry, wasn't being intense, wasn't being cruel. The father was just oblivious was not sensitive that my child is existing to itself in a certain way. My behavior is influencing this child, right? Because someone you trust, right? <clears throat> you, you, in some sense, in, it's as if, if, it's as if there's a sort of, <clears throat> how can I tell you? If they behave differently, the information of that trust changes. So it's like the modality of trust changes. Right? So that a super young child doesn't have the independence to know, okay, I am a self, I can decide who I want to be. Right? <clears throat> and so when, when in that moment I was like, okay, what is the what what is the world showing me now? You know, and it was honestly like just a, a suggestion that we can be so caring for the desire of our inner realms that we forget what is really alive in the outer realms. Not all our desires are alive. Not all of them care for the living. <clears throat> and that's the hidden talk my coughs are giving. Be at peace, because how else can peace be? And when one finds an unconditional truth, it doesn't matter where they arise. You're like, no way, look at how many ways the universe is happening. I'm one part of it. <clears throat> you know, sometimes people, you know, they don't realize the vow power and humility. Humility can get rid of a lot of depression, you know. <clears throat> Let me tell you how. 
right? So the person could be like, oh my God, why isn't life happening the way I want it? And then the person can be like, who am I? Who am I in this giant landscape thinking that the world has to go in accordance to just my inner realms? Right? So then that discretion arises. It's like, oh yeah, you know, if we're, I'm in a world. The world isn't just in me, you know? That's the discretion, you know? Valerie says, so it's like, I know when this comes on, is that telepathy? Okay, so this is something unique. A bunch of people in the comment section, they feel like they've, they're on rhythm of these talks. Let me tell you what's going on. <clears throat> One view is we're looking too into it. I'm pretty much giving these talks whenever the ideas come to me. So I'm giving these talks often. So it could be just that it's like my rhythm is matching your rhythm of when you check your phone or check your whatever right so there could be just this thing that it's just because I'm giving like I'm giving the talks after one another it's more often but if it's something more let me tell you what it is it's attention and realizing attention is unconditional to shape outside so you can know things wherever you are And that statement holds in regards to a metaphysical angle and a metaphysical angle. You can know things wherever you are. <laughs> you can look at something and know it, you know, and you can know things wherever you are. You can know the energy of the moment. And ultimately, I would say it's not even ide ideological decision making. There is a deeper decision making of which energy do we walk with, with which ally which, uh, what, what in this universe as an archetype do we make an ally? Yeah, there we go. What archetype are you making an ally? That means uh, it could be that the cruel person thinks being cruel is powerful. It's like, who says? How do you know being cruel is not being stupid? You know? <laughs> and how do you know being powerful is not being stupid? You right? There's so many angles of looking at things. There's so many ways of seeing life. And in one angle, you're like, oh my God, I'm looking up to this world. What a great world. You know, what a rare occurrence. You know, on another level, you're like, oh my God, so many, so many errors. It's like a computer screen, error, error, error. <laughs> There's so many errors in this realm that I think this is why pirates were like, err, err. <laughs> Can you imagine the pilot? I could totally see in a cyberspace simulation um, of a pirate and somebody speaking in that cyberspace, cyberspace simulation with the pirate and the pirate saying air, but the, there's an air on the air, so it's like... <laughs> so the, literally it's like the simulated cyberspace pirate is saying air, but it sounds like R, you know? You can free yourself by realizing the context of your life can also be your choice. This is where strength comes. I don't know how else a person can be strong unless they choose to move something. <clears throat> that means there has to be a choice. The species has to prepare for multidimensional advancement. A giant multi and imagine if there's some, if you're multidimensional, that means you can't judge the moment to have a response to it ultimately. That means how do I how do we know that when we're eating like a Caesar salad, like you know, I don't know, to a panpsychist, uh, you know, panpsychist from a panpsychist view, how do we know we're not like Caesar conquering, you know, <clears throat> the plant kingdom?
chat section I've written a statement <clears throat> it's a simulation your attitude programs your karma that means um, a human being that doesn't care for their human family is not a human being that means regardless of <clears throat> uh, class color creed and even ideal ideology we have to realize we are human first we are just simple creatures and then the complexity is overlaid by our conscious attention as being minds and all and you know it's pretty cool when you realize you're a mind you feel kind of like you're floating in space but the space is your awareness <laughs> It's like, I, you know, I, <clears throat> anyways, and look at the word cruelty even, you can see the word rule hidden in it, and how many cruel rulers have we had, it's like a ruler who couldn't see <clears throat> became cruel. to end off but in the chat section Lorna says a man doesn't have to move to create karma it's in thoughts um, if you don't move whose karma is it if you were a statue right now who would have karma can a statue have karma karma in the outer realms is cause and effect so there has to be some sort of causal movement a sort of input and then it's it, it, it was this concept you know, it's like garbage in, garbage out. And when it comes to programming, what you input into the system is what you get out of it. So without input, how can you have output, right? So without input, how can you have karma? And even if you have, if it's, if you want to say it, I would say that's your karma, maybe in your inner realms. That means in your outer realms, your karma is physically what happens to you. Your inner realms is what you non-physically have access to. It's your, you know. Because I'm telling you, the yogis didn't sit still and silent in caves for years for no reason, you know. They technically did, but the, uh, the notion was, was that when the body doesn't move, you notice your mind's movement. Then after a while, if your body's still, you're going to notice like, yourself in your mind's movement. You're going to live in your mind's life. And then once you have lived in your mind's life, you're going to discover your mind's life to a superior dimension, <clears throat> to an unknown. You're going to find the mind of your mind, okay? And that mind is inconceivable. So, ultimately, you become instantaneous, unknown viewer. And this is okay. Those who comprehend this and realize everybody is starting, their world and new every day. We're just caring for just the potential of our species, right? That's like the, seems to be the smartest thing to do. <clears throat> that means right now, even if let's say civilization were worse, they were like, oh my God, it's all gonna go to nothing, you know? And so let's say, okay, yeah, it was. But right now we would look at the geometry of what we have and what are the potentials to counter it. That means how many strategies are there that we don't know about? How many ways of our salvation could there be? How many greater ways to your way of living right now is there like an invention that you maybe haven't discovered yet? 
<clears throat> that means it's as if um, we discover um, a sort of uh, reinventionism of the state of mind through an inseparability of the individual activity with the cosmic activity, as Swami Krishna says. That, that is the end of meditation. That's when the, you know, when meditation ends, when there's no meditator left anymore. <clears throat> that means the person, that even if somebody said they meditate properly, if you ask them, what was your meditation like? You know, they would have to just stare at you, really. But if they had to say something, they'd be like, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, imagine uh, um, your world uh, had another world. Yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks for listening. This was a long episode. Um, so all those people who listened through, uh, not the applause for yourselves, you know, in doing this. You know. <laughs> And really, I, I remember one last thing to say. I said in one talk that genius is shy and cruelty is not authorizing the greater ways the brain can activate on this planet, right? So there has to be an overall decision from all hierarchies, all dimensions of the hierarchy to create a new ethos, a new collective world story. <clears throat> So the more peaceful the outer realms, the more our minds can become, uh, uh, will show their wilderness properly, right? But the, so that means literally, um, I think there should be no prisons. There should just be civilization like with a kingdom, giant wall. And any human being who doesn't care to be civilized, they should be banished out of that kingdom. That's it. There should be literally kingdom civilization, kingdoms like like that. And let me tell you why I'm saying this, right? Because you got to care for something if you want to see its future. And the moment cruelty is a sign that some, the, the, whatever cruel person, the moment has stopped caring for your future. If, for example, there's domestic violence and the first time a domestic violence event happens, that human psyche has stopped caring for your future. You see, and that's a, that becomes a dangerous relationship. But nothing to be alarmed with because the advanced communicator sees the geometry of the moment without emotion and then has an emotional filter of analysis of uh, whatever is going on. That means do, it's not like the person should stop being emotional. Oh my God, that's a lot of people mis, misconstrue stoicism as just like kind of uh, uh, no emotion. It's like that's not the case. It's virtue, it's true emotion. That means you stay true to your emotions, but your emo the desire of a certain emotion wanting to come ahead of its time doesn't blind you of how the outer realms is actually taking place in that way. And as Rumi says, I have lived on the edge of insanity, on the lip of insanity, wanting to know reasons, knocking on the door, it opens. I have been knocking from the inside. <laughs> that means this whole time, Romy's like, I'm this dude seeking God. And then I realize, oh my God, who's moving the person seeking God? That means, that means it's as if, like, if whether you call it, you personify it through narrative, which is a religious strategy, or you personify it through a technique, which is, you can say, a more secular strategy, or a method with a method, you know, or you in some sense are like, look at this world, it's so unknown. <laughs> it's like, I look, I'm trying to know myself here, but I am the unknown, you know? We're all, we are all unknown minds moving known bodies. And if we ignore this, it's like, why lie to ourselves when we're alive once? Why lie at all when you're alive once? You know, that means like, that's where, I don't know, nobility comes, no? You're like, okay, I'm, I'm alive on this planet once. I have a sort of value system as a human being, and I'm going along with this. It's like, for me, even human life has just become um, just witness, watching uh, systems just play out their life cycles. And so really, it's, it's, it's like the view is, um, your eyes are your true leader. 
and my voice hopefully is just a mirror it remains as a mirror ultimately Thank you for listening. I'll be on Discord for those interested. Namaste. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm just trying to write this thing here. And uh, anyways, thanks for listening. Awesome.